Hi, this is Chris Overholt, and this module will go over smoke layer height and smoke control as part of the Fire Dynamics course. Uh, so to get started, uh, an overview of this module is that we're going to look at a couple of different methods uh, for smoke filling and for ventilation. So we're going to look at some uh, smoke filling equations and find out how to calculate the time uh, that will take to fill a compartment to a specified smoke layer height and we'll go through an example for that and once we're able to determine smoke layer heights uh, we'll look at different methods uh, that are used to mitigate uh, smoke in a fire um, natural ventilation uh, it will be quickly considered uh, and then we'll go through methods for mechanical ventilation where you may have fans blowing out uh, smoke and we'll do a mechanical ventilation example where we'll calculate the amount a volumetric flow that's required uh, to maintain the smoke layer at a given height. Uh, we start this method uh, where we have some compartment and we'll get to an example in a second but we may have a fire uh, in a room or in a warehouse or, or some enclosure and we want to determine uh, how fast the smoke layer will descend and at what time will it fill to a given height? So if we were looking at 2 meters, which is around 6 feet, uh, which is around the head height of a person, uh, we could then say how long would it take for a given fire size in a given compartment, uh, the smoke layer to descend to that person's uh, head. So the, this first method does just that. So we look at first uh, the dimensionless heat release rate. And these are all parameters that we're going to use to calculate the smoke filling time. So the dimension heat release rate is given by Q star and this is defined by Zukowski as uh, Q divided by and if we use standard temperature and pressure uh, conditions we get this constant 1100 and then the height uh, of the enclosure uh, to the 5 uh, seconds power. And so with that we get a Q star variable that we'll use in the smoke filling equation the next parameter we look at is the dimensionless height and this is given by the symbol Y and it's a function of Z and H where Z is the height of the lower layer and H is the height of the room. So this is really just a way to normalize the smoke layer height uh, to the room height so you can see that this parameter would go uh, from 0 to 1 uh, where 0 would represent a smoke layer height of 0 and 1 would represent uh, smoke layer height that is as tall as our enclosure. And so once we have those two parameters and we'll see in the calculation procedure slide uh, coming up that there's a relationship here uh, found where it shows the dependence of the ceiling layer height, the Y, that's the non-dimensional layer height that we just found, uh, as a function of time and heat release rate. So we have Q star, the non-dimensional heat release rate, and we have tau, which is some time constant. So we'll see how we can use this chart. If we wanted to fill the room halfway with smoke, we could see using a, using a calculated Q star, which value uh, that we would use uh, on the x-axis here. And that's going to help us determine our uh, smoke filling time. And finally, we d define the dimensionless time, tau, is given by the time in seconds, uh, gravity, uh, the height of the compartment shows up here twice, um, and then S uh, given here, which is the floor area. And uh, I'll show you how to calculate that uh, in a second. So once we have all those variables, those actually can be related together to give us the time it will take for a smoke layer to reach a certain height Z in a room with given dimensions and a fire with a constant heat release rate. So the calculation procedure is shown here. First, we find Q star, the dimensionless heat release rate. Then we find Y, the dimensionless height. We use that figure to read the value of Q star to the one-third times tau, which was on the x-axis in the figure. Uh, we solve for tau. Then finally, we use the value of tau to calculate the time t uh, using the dimensionless time. So step four here gives us the actual time in seconds that it will take the smoke to reach a given well, layer height. So I've made a spreadsheet here. Uh, you can see on the left 
uh, that shows these steps um, placed out ready for calculations. So uh, let me get, okay, smoke filling equations, here we go. So we have step one is non-dimensional heat release rate, uh, and I'll go through these one by one. So the, we have the actual heat release rate in kilowatts as an input, we have the ceiling height as an input, and here we have the equation Q divided by 1100 times H to the five over two power, and we get out 0 0.002 for the non-dimensional heat release rate. So that's our Q star parameter, uh, easily calculated. And step two is to calculate a non-dimensional layer height. So if I go back, that was uh, given here, y is equal to z over h. So here I've specified uh, 2.5 meters. So if my ceiling height is five meters, uh, and, and I forgot to mention, I should mention that the yellow cells that you see in this table are inputs and the green uh, serve as outputs. Uh, the other parameters that do not have a color are either constant inputs or they're calculated uh, through other means. So I've input a 100 kilowatt fire with a ceiling height of five meters and I want to find out when that smoke layer is going to get halfway uh, down, is going to descend halfway down to 2.5 meters. Uh, so I input 2.5, 2.5 divided by H which is 5 gives us uh, not surprisingly half of the room height so 0.5 uh, so that's step two and next we need to uh, look at figure 8.9 so if we look at y is equal to 0.5 and our q was equal to 0 0.002 so that's this line here so if I try to draw a straight line over and then down I get about 4 for q star to the one-third times tau so I'll be using that 4 as an input here uh, to calculate the dimensionless time the dimensionless time here is just solving uh, tau equal, uh, so I'm, let's see, so if I expand this out, it's, uh, it's the 4 that I got from figure 8.9 divided by Q star to the one third power. So I'm just solving uh, for the dimensionless time tau. Finally, I use this equation here, and I want to solve for T. That's the actual time in seconds that it will take. Uh, for the smoke layer to descend, in this case, halfway uh, down the room, 2.5 meters. So if I input the length and width of the room, I need this for the floor area, which is here. Um, finally, this final equation is just solving for T. So T is equal to tau divided by uh, this other term here. So I have here tau in B17 divided by the square root of G over um, H and so on and I get out a time of 24 seconds so for a 100 kilowatt fire in a room that's 5 meters high by 5 meters wide by 5 meters long uh, if I want to, to determine when the smoke layer will reach halfway or 2.5 meters that's given here 24 seconds so it's a nice quick method uh, to estimate based off of the heat release rate and room dimensions um, what the time is for the smoke layer to reach a given height. So this could be maybe evacuation criteria or, or some other design criteria. So that's the calculation procedure. Now it should be noted that there are some limitations to this method. This is a very simplified method. Um, the limitations are shown here. The fire is considered as a point source only. Uh, the mass rate of the fuel is ignored. The plume is modeled as a pipeline of no volume and mass is instantaneously transferred from lower to upper layer. Uh, plume equation is used for a weak fire source. Uh, you notice that there's no heat transfer to the walls and ceiling. Uh, the, the rate of pressure rise is ignored. Uh, dp over dt is zero, so constant pressure. And uh, no account is taken of pressure differences uh, with height. It's a uh, global uh, constant uh, pressure value is assumed in the entire compartment. So with that, uh, how do we manage that smoke? Once we fill a room with smoke, uh, are there ways we can ventilate it? And how do we determine what the smoke layer height is over time? Well, natural ventilation can be used where we have a fire filling up. Uh, we have some mass flow rate from the plume. And then we have the area uh, coming out and the mass flow out of this vent. Notice we also have uh, 
the mass flow through the door, we need to have supply air coming through uh, in this case. So in this case, you may have a fire alarm system uh, or vents that are independent of a fire alarm system that open with uh, temperature, uh, so like a heat detector, and you'll open up vents on the roof, and with this method, uh, you can calculate what the smoke layer height would be. Uh, so essentially, now you have a filling, and you also have a loss, a mass loss from this uh, hot gas layer. Um, the next case we have is mechanical ventilation, and this is also used as a method where maybe natural ventilation would not be sufficient enough for a given fire. So we have the same situation with the fire filling up an enclosure. Um, in this case, though, we have uh, mass flow out due to forced ventilation. So we may have one fan or multiple fans that turn on in a fire, and we need to know what the flow rate or the volumetric flow rate of those fans should be, uh, and really the RPM or fan speed, uh, so that we can manage the smoke layer uh, to a specified height. So in order to do that, we have another calculation procedure uh, where we use, uh, we have multiple steps, and I've input that into a spreadsheet as well. And we have input the layer height, so here we have input in meters. Then we input the fire size Q, and I'm using this plume mass flow rate equation here. Uh, so from this, uh, where I want to manage the layer height at one meter, I want to keep it at one meter uh, for a 500 kilowatt fire, the plume flow rate is 0.6 kilograms per second. Step three is to calculate the hot gas layer temperature using this equation. And I've, I've filled in all those values, and you should also note that the H value that I've used is for lightweight concrete. This is heat transfer coefficient to lightweight concrete. I've used some other um, default uh, variables that you can find in the textbook. And finally, I give the length, width, and height of the compartment. And this is the area of the walls that's exposed to the hot gas layer. So with all that, I get out the hot gas layer temperature, 325 Kelvin. Next, I want to calculate the density of the hot gas layer. So that's given uh, by an equation here. So 353 divided by Tg, and I get out 1.09 uh, kilograms per meter cube. Finally, I can calculate the volumetric flow rate of the fan that's required to maintain the smoke at a layer height of one meter. So that's given here. It's the mass flow rate of the plume divided by the density of the hot gas layer. So on this bottom cell, I calculate uh, V sub E, and I get 0.55 cubic meters per second, or... Uh, about 1.2 cubic feet per minute. And for this, I could then specify uh, either in a fire model or to the uh, architect what size fans that I would need. I could give an area and a, uh, a velocity, and from that they could calculate the RPMs required to move that amount of smoke um, out. So there's an example uh, to design the capacity of a mechanical ventilation system to keep the smoke layer above a height of six meters for the building uh, described here. So I'll put that in uh, real quick. And so I will start from the top of my spreadsheet. The layer height is, well, they have a 30 by 40 uh, by 10 meter enclosure. They want the smoke layer to remain at six meters above the floor. And a design fire is one megawatt or 1,000 kilowatts, and the door area is given here. So. For our problem, we'll put in the layer height as 6 meters, the fire size is 1,000 kilowatts, and then the compartment length and width 30 by 40 by 10. And with this, we get out the plume flow rate at 15, about 15 kilograms per second, hot gas layer temperature of about 307 Kelvin, um, and we have the density of the hot gas layer. And finally, the flow rate here is about 13 cubic meters per second, or 28 thousand cubic feet per minute so substantial uh, amount here and so if we look at the solution we see that they gave the uh, volumetric flow rate of the fan at 13.3 meter cubic meters per second uh, and that's what I got is here as well through my calculations so that shows uh, various methods to uh, calculate smoke filling calculate uh, mechanical ventilation which is the amount of ventilation that we would require with a volumetric flow rate to keep the smoke layer at a given height.